<laughs> Babish is binging. Binging with Babish is one of my favorite dudes on the internet because like me, he's always down to improve his culinary chops, which is why I brought him to George Motz's kitchen. The last time I was there, I learned about the unique world of regional burgers and it blew my mind. So I wanted to come back for another round of schooling and taste test three regional burger legends. Professor. Good to How see you. Are you? Hey, I'm better. You know, the first time I was here, I was like starting my burger journey and you showed me a couple of regional burgers. Let's learn more about some burgers and I brought the homie here, Babish himself. Babish. Thanks for having me. Welcome bro. to my kitchen. This is like the church of burgers. This, this is the way Alvin talks <laughs> about it. It's like coming to like a higher level of burger education every time you come here. Technique, where it's from, history. I've eaten thousands and thousands of burgers in the last 18 years of research and I've seen a lot of different regional food ways. Thousands. So what I have done, research. this is what I get to give to you, is my knowledge of method. We did the East Coast, West Coast, the New Angeles, the Los York burger <laughs> of In-N-Out and Shake Shack together. There are so many regional burgers out there. We've barely scratched the surface. We're going to do three regional burgers today. One is the Lacey Edge burger that exists pretty much only in central Illinois. The uh, Juicy Lucy, which is pretty much only in Minneapolis. And the uh, Cuban Frita, which again exists pretty much only in Miami. Babish, you ready for this? I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm hungover. I've never been more Dude, ready. I'm hungry. <laughs> so this burger, we sort of call the Lacey Edge burger because it has a Lacey Edge of beef. Can we call it the Lacey Stacy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not changing the name. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know who Stacy is. <laughs> I don't know who Lucy is. Shout out Stacy. <laughs> but it's a smash burger. It's so thin on the edges that when it cooks, and of course as the proteins and the beef start to caramelize, it becomes almost like a beef candy. A friend of mine in the Midwest, Titus. Titus has really become my go-to guy for all things Midwestern That's burger culture. That's such a culture. burger name. Titus. Titus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He has gone very, very deep into the world of the Lacey Edge Burger. And what we discovered is that there is a, a very definitive line you can draw from St. Louis almost to Chicago. There's, there are other certain places nearby in Indiana, uh, but mostly in central Illinois. It's very odd. There's a place in St. Louis called Carl's Drive-In, and that place inspired Danny Meyer to make Shake Shack. Yeah, he grew up there. He's from there, yeah. yeah. That was his hometown burger. We need a very hot flat top. Right now we're burning at about, ooh, look at that, 450 roughly, right? Mm. This is about a three ounce ball of meat. Right? Right. Seasoning on the flat side. Some liberally salted. Right, watch this. Ready? It's not smashed straight down. It's smash and smear. Let's watch this. Ready? Off to one side. See that? Oh. oh. See what just happened? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lacey's. Oh. They should call that the doily, meat doily. The doily. Burger. Oh. oh my god, it's huge. Yeah. That's a pretty oh, nice stop. That's a yeah. pretty nice spatula you yeah. got there. This is Smashula. I sell these on my website. <laughs> <laughs> you can see what's happening is right away the, the proteins in the meat are starting to turn into like a beef candy, just about. Yeah, right? yeah, it's like crispies. Yes, it's, it's like the pancake with the outer crispy edge. Oh, oh shit. I already know that's gonna be good. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be the judge of that. If you go to Carl's Drive-In in St. Louis, they put a little bit of chopped onion on there and some pickles on top, but that's pretty much it. It's done. Hey, look at that. Look, at you can see through it. <laughs> you can see through this guy. Oh. <laughs> it's perfect. Perfect. It's Thank perfect. You. Uh, that, that's really like sort of turned the whole world of smash burgers on its head for me because that, 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 that takes a lot of precision and expertise to make. Right. You think about smash burgers today is that they've made it foolproof by using something called a channel smasher. Most yeah. places like Shake Shack and Five Guys, the smasher actually has these sort of these stops on it. So when you go, do smash a burger. Oh, so it has like a thickness to it. It never changes. It's always going to be the exact same oh, thickness. Okay. That's sort of make it foolproof so you, there's no way you can ever overcook a burger, undercook a burger. But this actually involves method because the center is still a little bit no, fat. No, that's what makes it awesome. And the edges are thin. Yeah. You can tell this. This is something that spawned Shay Shack because there's soul in this. That burger, it, you know, it, it was substantial, but it was barely there. It's all about crust. It is, it is a, it is a burger made of crust. Whoa! Yeah. Next level. Next, next level. level. <laughs> in your education, the next level. Next level. <laughs> The next burger on the syllabus is the Juicy Lucy. The Ooh. famous Juicy Lucy. Legendary. As you know, it's cheese stuffed. I've right? uh, fucked this up a hundred million times. It's actually pretty easy to fuck up because it is pure science. George, what's the, uh, what's the backstory behind this burger? Juicy Lucy, I, we don't really think there was a, a Lucy. 
a guy ran into a bar, Matt's Bar in Minneapolis, and he said, make me something different. And at the time, the bartender, the owner, he said, okay, how about I put some cheese in between two patties? I'll cook, I'll cook that for you. What do you think? It's great. Why not? And apparently, he took one bite of the burger and it burned his face and he said, whoa, that's one Juicy Lucy. Now that's, I mean, wow. we, 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 lore. we don't know. <laughs> I don't think there was, there may I'm, have been one witness. I'm, I'm picturing this with like pork pie. That's one Juicy Lucy. That's one Juicy Lucy. <laughs> that's actually two pinched patties together. The only way to actually make this burger correctly is to use a patty press. It's one. This is right. Oh, chill. Okay. With two nearly identical sides. Okay, now the cheese goes on in the inside. Cheese has to be obviously folded up so that it, it can fit. Now watch this. This these get put together on the parchment paper just like that, right? See that? They do this every day at Matt's Bar. I'm not pinching. I'm I'm actually pushing Scary. onto the flat top. Now, if you're at Matt's, they do use chopped onion. They, they put 20 of these on the grill and then they'll just throw chopped onion all over the place. So it's like a pita right now. You know, like when you make a pita, like yeah. it starts to bubble up because like all the heat is like- It's starting to dome up. On flip, we inspect. Oh, baby. Dude, look at that crust right there. <laughs> so how do you prevent cheese blowout? Too thick, top center, relieve. Watch what happens here, watch this. See how it's set to bubble oh, up the yeah. top there? There you yeah. go. See it? Right there. This pressure out. is being relieved and liquid is coming out the top. So curious. Oh, 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 mm. oh yeah. There oh, damn. Oh, yeah. Hot molten cheese. Be careful. Oh, oh my give gosh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hot. That's hot. Yeah. It's hot. Yeah. Look at that cheese. It's, it's perfect. perfect. This is a stunt burger. Making stunt burgers isn't necessarily efficient or practical at all. Not at all. Most stuffed burgers are such flops. But when you nail it and you get something like this, it's stuff of legend. And to think this burger was actually invented at Matt's because they were trying to keep people in the bar drinking. Mm. It was, they used to give them out for free. It would work. It was a free yeah. burger. It used to be a free burger. Yeah. Burn, burn, your, burn your tongue <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and cool, cool it down with yeah. cool the beer. Yeah. The Cuban Frita, Florida. Specifically in Miami, it's only in Little Havana. I think every single human being who shows up in Miami has to make the point to cross 95 into the actual cultural part of Miami. And one of the most incredible things happening there is the Frita. Take us there. It's the Cuban hamburger. In 1959, Cubans began to flee their country following the Cuban Revolution, and many settled in Miami, only about 200 miles away. The Frida was one of the culinary survivors of the exodus. Sharing the same DNA as the American hamburger, the Frida was served from street carts in Havana before Fidel Castro seized control of the country. What's absolutely fascinating about this burger is that today you can't find this burger in Cuba. It phased out. Yeah, communist Cuba right. could not keep up with the demand for it. Look at how many ingredients we have here. <laughs> you have lots of ingredients. I noticed that there's no cheese here. Exactly, no cheese. So a traditional Frida that didn't have nice cheese on it. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> There's so much going on in this burger, you don't actually need cheese. I'm sure. In yeah. fact, it's, kind of, it's a, sort of a, a line of demarcation. You can tell in a Frida place who's younger or older because the older folks won't order cheese at all. I'm also noticing that this looks like pan cubano. Is that That's right. This is actually yeah. exactly what it is. These are, these Look are, at that. It's Cuban bread in the shape of a hamburger bun. The most important part of the Frida experience is actually spicing the meat. This is actually shaved onions, Ooh. right? Chopped garlic, paprika in there, obviously. Pinch of cumin, just like that. Oh, yeah. I can smell it already. Pretty good size, probably a four ounce ball I'm gonna use. It gets onions first on top. They get a lot of onions. There's onions in the burger already. In Miami, they use a sauce. Everyone has a proprietary liquid. Well, it's mostly water, but it's water, hot sauce, vinegar, tomato paste, okay. garlic, some onions, some sugar. Magic is what it is. It's basically, it's a, it's a bottle. Magic in a bottle. And then watch this. This is what they do. They add around the edges. Whoa. You can smell that, you smell that? Oh, oh, that's great. The liquids evaporate and the sugars are starting to caramelize. Oh, baby. For you, is this like pushing the boundaries of what a burger is, remains a burger? Great that's a question. great question. This is, yeah, that's a great question. The minute you start to put spice into the meat, I think you're already pushing the definition of what a real American hamburger should be. But yeah. you know, it's okay. I, I'll let it slide for this because this is a, a fucking phenomenal burger. I Fair can't me. wait. There you go. On to a waiting, oh. look at that, a roll from Miami. Oh, Jesus. The first thing they do is they put more onions, oh, right? Yeah. They take their julienne fried potatoes. Now on top of that, which I never would normally do again, is put ketchup on a burger. That seems but, superfluous with the sauce. But yeah. they have, I know, but they do it. This is what they do. I'm just giving you the traditional, oh, this is it. I this is the traditional Frida with some, there you go. Now Come normally on. they would actually press it in a, in a sandwich press. Bam. I hear the crunch. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's way different than I was expecting even. Wow. It definitely tastes like chorizo for sure. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought of when I had it. The one. garlic is nice. The potato crunch is where it's yeah. at. It's like the X factor in and this And I thing. love the pan cubana too. Like, yeah. big pillowy. I'm actually not a big fan of, of usually putting fries in sandwiches. It's frankly um, grotesque. Uh, it's it is grotesque, I agree, yeah. But, but this is a fabulous, um, it's almost like putting chips in a sandwich, which I'm much more in favor of. Yeah, this is, this is why if you go to Miami, you cannot just put your ass on the beach and go home. You have to get your butt across the highway and eat one of these things. Knowing the story and then eating the burger, it just like makes it that much better. So three burgers today, the Lacey Edge Burger, Ooh. the Juicy Lucy, and now the Frita. Oh my if, you, if you could pick a favorite, you guys, which would you pick as your favorite? Yeah, I think I like the first one better because, you know, to me, it's like, it's what a hamburger should be. I'm a purist. If one could go national. Well, I could right. see this becoming like super hot and spicy, like right. forget hot chicken. It's now the hot burger. Right. You yeah, know? that's actually, this is. That's what this could this, become. Both my favorite and the one that I think should go national, I think is the Juicy Lucy. For some reason I have this affection for it, even though I've only ever been to Minneapolis once. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> for some reason I have this like hometown pride about it. It's like a sleeper, right? It's like unassuming. It does, it look, like if you look at it and you didn't know it was stuffed with cheese, you'd just be like, oh, it's a, it's, it's a burger. A boring burger. Yeah, it's a boring it. ass yeah. burger. When you eat it, it's like. Yeah. George, thank you so much for having me in your home, in the Burger Church, exposing me to these beautiful <laughs> new <laughs> cultures and stop, ideas. Stop, stop. <laughs> and, and, and broadening our burger horizons. My yes. pleasure. Hey, you know, thank thanks you for coming. Thank you so much, man. I'll see you for the next class. What's up, Burger World? It's Alvin Kailan of The Burger Show. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, if not for me, for the segue.